Welcome to the channel, you beautiful people. Today we're going to be feeding some of my planted aquariums. This rimless fish tank from Japan was a total impulse buy for me. Hey, at least I'm impulsive about buying fish tanks and not fish. I've done several aquascapes with this tank now, having moved homes with it and surviving that ordeal. Holy crap. Oh. I think out of all the past scapes, right now is my favorite phase of this tank. Today I'm going to be feeding the inhabitants of this tank some salmon. Now whenever I feed fish to my pet fish, there will always be a couple comments saying Cannibalism. I realize they're just the 8 to 10 year olds who comment that, but just in case there's some newcomers to the hobby, fresh fish is actually very healthy to the omnivores and carnivores of your fish tank. Usually the fish flakes people feed also have fish, but it's just fish meal. So as we drop in the piece of salmon, the dwarf resboras are getting excited by the new smells. They are not used to being fed huge chunks like this, but they do taste the food particles coming off of the salmon. To help them get more of a taste, I break off little bits of salmon so they can fit it in their tiny mouths. Once the food falls past the canopy and lands in the underbrush, some of the more curious fish follow suit. But the world down here belongs primarily to the bottom dwellers. Usually takes a while for the news to spread through the colony, and during this grace period, the dwarf asbora can still enjoy a private meal in peace. Even a species of fish the size of a fingernail will have varying degrees of personality. Some individuals are more opportunistic feeders than others. Once one shrimp finds its way to the food, the whole tank is immediately notified. Some shrimp are more wary than others. The least risky will not even show up to this 5 star buffet. Algae growing on the plants and biofilm on the wood and substrate are more than enough. Why risk more for redundancy? Spoken like a true anti-foodie. I could never. Some shrimp take their time to make their way to the epicenter. They stay around the borders and out of sight, in case bigger, meaner things have their sights on such a wonderful smelling meal as well. The water column has now filled up with the tasty bite-sized morsels of salmon. There's actually no need to venture directly into the fray. It is definitely good to be prudent and on guard. Even if the other competitors are shrimp, they're not all the same size. The resident big boss Amano shrimp has woken up from its slumber. Finally a meal worth getting out of bed for. It gorges on the protein rich food and is now well prepared for his next molt. The creatures in the understory comes in all different shapes and sizes. Down here, the body shape of a typical fish you might imagine is not the most efficient locomotive option. Slipping through the jungle of Cryptocorin with a downturned mouth and food sensitive barbels, the Coolie Loach is perfectly adapted down here. And this juicy, delicious piece of seemingly endless nutrients has activated some zoomies. The dwarf asbora want nothing to do with his bottom dwelling relative. They look down on the loach, as if it's too beneath them to do the same. Personally, I think it's great to let loose once in a while, to be able to look silly in front of others, laugh at yourself, and to not take yourself too seriously in general. And after all the fun, to eat up real good. The snails were probably the first to sense the food, but unfortunately for them, only 5-10% to of them will be fast enough to reach the food before it's removed. Leaving such a nutrient-dense piece of food in this environment can only be done sparingly, and the food cannot be kept in for too long. After a few hours, it was time to say goodbye. The rest of the salmon will not be wasted, of course. It will be dinner for my sister tonight. Just kidding. Chong's Kingdom of Endler's Live Bearers will start the hand-me-down process. This is kind of like the Try Guys, Keith eats the menu, and these fish are the food babies, except no one cheated on anyone. King Chonk is totally mind blown by the flavors. You literally don't need any teeth to eat this, it's so tender. My rescue betta and guppies are happy to take a crack at it as well. The betta is not very used to big pieces like this, so I made bite-sized morsels for him. Back in the ADA cube garden, the shrimp reminisced the good times.
and they will forever hold holy rituals on this ground and pray to the salmon gods to bring them prosperity and more food in the future. Last but not least, it's Tamago's turn. Tamago would make short work of this. She takes a few good bites, but she would rather play instead. She did finish everything up eventually, after my hand started raisining for being in the water for so long. Thank you guys so much for watching, please smash that like button and make sure you guys are subscribed so you don't miss out on any future feeding videos. See you guys next time.